Hi everyone, uh, I appreciate having such opportunity to talk in a brief uh, as a review uh, about COVID-19. So in my presentation, uh, I will just go through the background, virology, then we'll cover certain concepts in epidemiology, uh, then uh, we'll talk about immunity with risk of free. So if you look at the coronavirus timeline, we found that in December 8th, the first case uh, where uh, have been uh, recorded in Wuhan uh, coronavirus. Then uh, on 31st of December, China alerts WHO about several pneumonia cases. And the 1st of January, Wuhan wholesale seafood market shutdown happened because they thought it's the source of the infection. On the 7th of January, identification of new virus called COVID-19 then the 11th, a first death in China recorded, and the 13th, a first case outside China reported in Thailand. And the 23rd, Wuhan placed under quarantine. Then the 29th, a death toll counts 132 with 6,000 uh, new reported uh, cases. A few days later, coronavirus declared the global health emergency by WHO. And in the 11th of March 2020, uh, coronavirus confirmed as pandemic by so the disease is called COVID-19 and the virus caused that disease is SARS-CoV-2 which is severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus this is the third coronavirus outbreak in two decades so for SARS-1 it was uh, started in 2003 and ended by 2004 for the MERS, it's in 2012 till the present, and for SARS-CoV-2, it's 2019 till the present. So it's basically uh, three uh, types of uh, species under the coronavirus family with different date uh, of the year, uh, but the uh, persistent virus up to now is for MERS-CoV and SARS-CoV. So these the three only species that can cause severe respiratory disease uh, outbreak. So uh, if you look here, we do have two types of corona family. We have a human alpha coronavirus, then a human beta coronavirus. With this sub uh, genus, and for mers cov it's under the genus of Merbo uh, uh, covirus. And for SARS-CoV-1 uh, covirus, it's SARS -CoV and SARS-CoV-2. And uh, through the uh, genomic uh, study, there was a genomic similarity uh, of SARS-CoV-2 with SARS-CoV-1 in 75 to 80%, and was of 50% to MERS-CoV-1 and 96% to APAT coronavirus. And for the receptors uh, for the host uh, cells, SARS-CoV shared SAR uh, one, uh, two shared SARS-CoV one and the similar uh, receptors of angiotensin converting enzymes two. And for MERS-CoV, it's of DBB four. So this table straight uh, why uh, in or in which mean uh, they decided about the genomic. Uh, similarity and it was by the percentage of the amino acid in a protein sequences uh, as you can see uh, here uh, the highest uh, similarity percentage of similarity was with SARS-CoV-1 so for the virus structure uh, here you can see it's the coronavirus family with the genus of beta coronavirus and the subgenus is serbo uh, covirus with the species of SARS it's of RNA virus and the genomes it has uh, two to four fold more stable than those of influenza uh, where the mutations uh, doesn't have happen more frequently and it has certain diameter coiled helical nucleocapsid and it's of a spherical uh, enveloped uh, particles as you can see with projecting spikes uh, of a protein uh, that attach to the host cells. So the phylogenetic analysis of 103 strains of SARS-CoV-2 from China showed two different types of strains. 
For type L, it's accounting for 70% of the strains, and for the type S, it's accounting for 30%. The L type predominated during the early days of the epidemic in China, but accounted for a lower proportion of strains outside the Wuhan. And the clinical implications of these findings, till now, it's uncertain. So uh, here, as you can see in the diagram, it's demonstrate the hap haplotype uh, networks of SARS-CoV-2. So for the blue uh, color, it represents the uh, L uh, strain, and for the red color, it represents the S strains, where the yellow, uh, or the orange, uh, I mean the orange arrow, indicates that the L uh, type evolved from the S type uh, of a strain. And uh, these uh, genome sequences uh, by certain studies indicate that the S type uh, was most likely to be the ancient version of SARS-CoV. So uh, for, the, for, for the geographic uh, distribution of SARS-CoV-2, as you, as you know, that globally it's more than 4 million affected uh, patients. And it has been reported as per WHO websites. And this interactive map uh, it's highlight the confirmed uh, cases uh, all over the world. And uh, you have to know that the cumulative incidence uh, in each country, it varies, depends on the population densities and the demographics and the extent uh, of how much they are testing and reporting and also the timing of mitigation strategies uh, is uh, very important uh, in, de uh, in, de in demonstrating the incidence rate. Here is another kind of a graph that represents the ca cases rates in WHO websites uh, in each country. You see the situation report uh, that you will see it in daily paces uh, released in the same uh, websites uh, with the different uh, uh, regions uh, with the rate uh, of this. So in aim to understand uh, this infection and the infected population, uh, there are certain studies uh, talk, uh, talk about the characteristic uh, or the clinical uh, characteristic of the uh, infected patient. So uh, for this uh, study that were, were released in JAMA in, to, in April 2020, uh, where they included 44,672 patients, uh, the infection rate was much higher in the adult age. Uh, then uh, for the other age group, it was uh, much lower, especially for the uh, younger age. Here also they looked at the spectrum of the disease. Uh, uh, it was mainly of mild presentation in 81% and severe in 14%, critical in 5%. And for case fatality rate, it was of 2.3%. It was mainly in the elderly uh, of age, uh, like more than 80 years old. So this is another uh, study uh, of uh, released uh, from China, Wuhan City and, uh, and was published in New England Journal uh, last April, where they included 1,099 patients and they looked at their uh, characteristics uh, and the presentations. So uh, the, when they looked at the uh, age, age group, also they they uh, demonstrate or illustrate more about the disease severity with e each age group. So the disease severity was much higher uh, as of the uh, previous study uh, with the elderly of more than uh, 65 years old. And it was more common also uh, for the uh, male uh, rather than the females. Uh, here also they looked at the coexisting disorder uh, with the uh, COVID-19 infection. So uh, the people who had these uh, comorbidities, they were uh, uh, more to, uh, prone to have a severe illness, including uh, COVD, diabetes, hypertension, coronary heart disease, cerebrovascular disease, hepatitis B infection, 
cancer, chronic renal disease, and immune uh, deficiency. So here is uh, also one of the uh, very uh, interesting uh, review uh, about uh, 150 uh, patients. Uh, they looked at their uh, clinical predictors uh, for having uh, mortality. Uh, so uh, for uh, graph uh, A, uh, as you can see, there is uh, the uh, they correlate between the age and uh, the uh, patient who died. So the death rate was much higher with the elderly, starting with 51 uh, years uh, of old and increasing uh, with uh, with increasing the age. For uh, for the graph uh, B, uh, it's um, uh, it's uh, demonstrate the laboratory uh, parameters, and for uh, the uh, death cases, uh, it was um, uh, higher to have uh, higher to be associated with higher level of interleukin six, C-reactive protein, and uh, myoglobulin and cardiac troponin. And here in uh, C, uh, they looked at the uh, interval from the onset till uh, the death uh, from the onset of symptoms till uh, death uh, so they found that um, it's mainly uh, it's mainly in, in people uh, with um, a, short, a shorter duration of uh, uh, presenting symptoms of a 12 uh, till uh, between 12 and the 20 uh, days and here, uh, this pie chart uh, demonstrate the causes of mortalities that was mainly uh, for a patient of respiratory complicated respiratory failure, and uh, in uh, and thirty percent. Then in twenty two percent, it was of respiratory failure associated with myocardial damage or heart failure. Then the other uh, five percent was with patients of heart failure, and the other five is of uh, unknown causes. So uh, this is a table that uh, uh, compare uh, between uh, COVID-19 and the other uh, coronavirus uh, that um, uh, looked at their uh, clinical characteristic and the presentation of each patient. So for COVID-19, um, uh, uh, mainly uh, the age uh, of uh, elderly uh, affected uh, uh, patients and for comorbid conditions uh, was observed more with MERS-CoV. ARDS and pneumonia was common among all the three type of uh, virus and uh, for other uh, complications like shock, multi-organ failure, invasive mechanical ventilation was much higher with MERS-CoV. For vasopressors use, renal replacement also again was much higher for MERS-CoV. Regarding mortality uh, for COVID-19 is predicted to be of 62 still. Uh, for MERS-CoV is of 67% and it's of 34% for SARS-1. Regarding the transmission, uh, still the exact mode of spread is unclear. It thought via respiratory droplets, uh, direct contact. Uh, but there is an, uh, a very good uh, review in New England Journal um, in March 17th. Uh, they generate uh, arousals uh, similar to the infectious dose uh, that has been detected in infected patients. So when they study this arousal uh, stability in the air, uh, it found that it lasts for three hours. And when they looked at the stability in different surfaces, uh, it lasts between 48 uh, up to uh, 72 hours. So uh, there is a studies that have, uh, have identified viral RNA in ventilation system and air samples of these uh, hospital rooms uh, of the patients, but the culture for viable virus were not, were not performed in these studies. A high-speed imaging to visualize respiratory exhalations 
suggested respiratory droplets that may get carried in the gas cloud and have horizontal trajectories beyond six feet with a speaking, coughing, and or sneezing. It has been uh, raised in a, in a specific study that was released in uh, in Hospital Nature's, um, and this is really. Uh, of concern regarding the transmission. But the relevance of these findings to the epidemiology and their clinical implications still it's unclear. Also the interval during which an individual with COVID-19 is infectious is uncertain. And the transmission during asymptomatic and throughout uh, the course of illness, it's, uh, this is uh, very unique for uh, such kind of uh, inf COVID uh, virus infection. Uh, the viral RNA detection from respiratory and other specimens and detection of viral RNA does not necessarily indicate the presence of infectious virus. So it can be like none uh, viable uh, or uh, non-life uh, virus. So viral RNA from upper respiratory uh, appear to be uh, higher soon after symptom onset compared with later of the illness. So, uh, here is um, uh, a review for uh, 14 patients uh, in regard to viral detections in nasal and the throat swabs. Uh, so uh, the red color, uh, it's for the uh, ICU uh, patients, uh, labeled with red. Uh, for the black, it's for patients with mild to moderate uh, presentation. And for the blue, it's for secondary cases. So uh, it showed that uh, the time uh, trend uh, of uh, virus quantification, uh, it is uh, of more uh, level, as you can see, uh, than uh, in the throat uh, swabs. And also for the patients of uh, critical illness or in ICU admission, they tend to have more prolonged uh, detection of the virus than the other uh, age, uh, than the other uh, presenting group. So for uh, virus shedding and period of infectivity, there is one study talk about the timing of infection among 77 transmission pairs uh, in China with a mean serial interval 5.8 days between the onset of symptoms in each pair. And assumptions about the incubation period suggested that the infection started 2.3 days prior to the symptom onset and it peaked 0.7 days before the symptom onset. It declined within seven days, and most of the patients were isolated uh, following symptom onset, which would reduce the risk of a transmission later in the illness, regardless of the infectious uh, period. So uh, here, uh, this in this graph, uh, there was a 94 patients were included with 77 uh, infector infected transmission pairs, index case and secondary cases. So uh, here, what we what they observed that higher uh, viral, uh, as you can see here, uh, higher viral load was detected more at the time of uh, symptoms. Uh, onset and also the infectious infectious um, uh, uh, the onset of infectiousness uh, also uh, it's peaked on or before uh, the symptom onset and if you looked at the secondary cases over here in relation to the primary case uh, they were uh, infected during the index case a pre-symptomatic uh, stage which is really uh, of concern, especially with COVID-19. So the extent to which a symptomatic or pre-asymptomatic transmission occur and how much it contributes to the pandemic, it's remain unknown. And in the analysis of 175 locally acquired COVID-19 cases in Singapore, transmission during incubation period was estimated to account 6.4%. And how long the person remains infectious is also uncertain. And the duration of viral RNA is, shedding is va variable. Uh, and this appears to be uh, a wide uh, range, which may depend on the severity of 
So here in this uh, study or preliminary study from 56 COVID-19 patients, uh, what they found, they studied 56 patients with mild to moderate illness, non-required ICU, and the median duration of viral RNA shedding from nasal or oropharyngeal specimen was of 24 days, and the longest was of 42 days. So for uh, detectable viral RNA does not always correlate with isolation of infectious virus. So it's not necessarily uh, contagious. It can be non-viable. Uh, and in this study of the non, uh, nine patients with mild COVID-19, infectious virus was not detected from respiratory specimen when the viral RNA level was less than 10 copies. According to CDC, uh, when patients continue to have detectable viral RNA in the upper respiratory sample following clinical recovery by three days after the recovery, the RNA concentrations are always below the replication uh, of competent infectious virus. Uh, so with this, this information is very important. Uh, especially uh, for patients who had a uh, negative uh, result uh, to be cleared as a cured, then they get uh, after that as a positive result, which can be explained uh, as by this theory. So uh, for here, uh, this is uh, one of the recent uh, study uh, that talk about the RNA viremia uh, analysis. So uh, they used a pair of uh, plasma uh, and NP uh, samples for around uh, 85 uh, patients. And they found the viremia in the 28 of them. And uh, it was much common, commonly detected in a patient with required mechanical ventilations or uh, having higher rate of mortality. So here in the, uh, in the other uh, side, you will see that the black dots is to present the plasma uh, uh, level, and for the uh, red dot, it's the uh, NB uh, level. For the purple, uh, uh, for the purple uh, square, it's uh, represent the uh, time of admission, and for the uh, blue lines, it's uh, the patients while they are in ICU. So what you can see here that all the patients uh, that were admitted in the ICU, they did have a detectable level uh, of uh, RNA. So the risk of the transmission, it varies by the table and the duration of the exposure and uh, the use of a preventive uh, measures. Uh, most of secondary infections have been described among household contacts or healthcare settings. A uh, cluster of cases also happened after social or work gathering and contact tracing in the early stages of epidemics uh, suggested that more, uh, most of the secondary infections were of household contacts with a secondary attack rate up to 16 persons. And this uh, explained why uh, mitigation restriction uh, process is very so uh, this is uh, this table uh, demonstrate the uh, viral uh, sites of viral uh, detections and accepted modes of transmission. For nasal varynx, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, the RNA has been detected, uh, which uh, confirmed the theory of droplet uh, droplet uh, transmission, also of direct contact uh, transmissions. Also, it's detected in sputum and saliva. And also in this tool where they raise the issue of fecal oral transmission, but it's not proven uh, till now. Also, it has been detected in the blood, especially in severe illness patients, conjunctiva, especially in patients uh, presenting with conjunctivitis, uh, vertical vagina transmission, uh, RNA detected, but uh, not aware about if it was of live virus or infectious uh, virus. Also, it has been detected in the urine. This is of recent uh, data for cats, uh, and it can transmit between each other, but not uh, to the human. There is a new reported cases about the detection of the virus in the placenta, uh, and uh, this was also uh, uh, measured uh, or checked after uh, miscarriage. 
So for the environmental contamination, it's represented in the contaminated surfaces, as we mentioned earlier, and it can be transmitted after we touch the surface, then uh, we touch our, uh, the mucous membrane or in the mouth, eye, or nose. There's a study in Singapore talk about the viral RNA that detected and all the surfaces uh, tested uh, and also in the airborne infecting, uh, infected isolation uh, room of a patient. And the study evaluated the survival and, uh, and the, uh, in the plastic surface at room temperature. Uh, it can reach up to six, uh, but not uh, nine days. And there is a systemic review of similar study talk about various disinfectant uh, like ethanol between a concentration of 62 and 71 that was successful in, in deactivation of the virus. And the duration of viral persistence on the surface, it seems that it depends on the ambient temperature, relative humidity, and also the size of the initial uh, inoculum. Okay, so about immunity and risk of free infections. Uh, antibody to the virus are induced in, uh, in those uh, who have become infected. It has a proven bar by uh, the use of serological uh, testing. Uh, and also, uh, we uh, gain this information from previous kind of viruses like SARS-CoV-1 and MERS-CoV. IgM can develop within eight days, and the IgG it can develop within 20 to 28 days. Preliminary evidence suggests that these antibodies are protective, but to be uh, definitely. Uh, yeah, because some of the cases, uh, th there is a claim that uh, the immune response is different from one person to another. Some of them, they would have high clinical uh, immune response, and them, uh, some of them, they would have low immune response. And we do have, like, the new uh, serological testing that would show you the level of the titer and it's very helpful uh, especially with uh, the uh, the use of convalescent plasma as therapy unknown if a protective immune response uh, and for how long uh, it will last uh, so previous uh, sars cov and sars uh, uh, sars cov1 and mers cov the immunity uh, usually lasts for 2 to 3 years uh, a case serious regarding convulsant plasma based, uh, to be used as a therapy uh, was based on uh, such a theory of gaining uh, immunity. And uh, the positive test that occurred shortly after a negative test uh, with the concern about reinfection uh, was were not associated with worsening of symptoms and it may uh, represent uh, non-infectious, non-viable virus, uh, and that's why it appeared in, in the uh, viral, uh, in the peripheral, uh, I mean, detected in the sampling. Uh, so if evidence confirmed that the presence of this antibody re reflects a protective immune response, then serological screening will be an important to understand population immunity uh, if we will depend on uh, surveillance uh, to the whole uh, population. Uh, so uh, this is a very interesting uh, paper uh, published uh, on, on, um, in one of the uh, journals uh, in last March. Uh, it looked at the humoral and cellular immune uh, response. Uh, so uh, as you can see here in the left side, uh, they checked for the uh, IgG uh, receptor uh, antibodies. And it was associated with high level of uh, neutralizing uh, antibody uh, titers. And in the middle here, uh, for healthy uh, people, this, uh, this level or antibodies were not detected. And in the right, uh, this neutralizing antibody titer was associated with M protein of T cells. And this uh, suggests the theory of uh, a very high uh, immune response in form of cellular and humoral response to uh, COVID-19 uh, infection. Thank you very much.